Hi everyone, this is Alex Tardy, Meteorologist with the National Weather Service. Looks like active weather for this week of October. Showers and even embedded thunderstorms expected across all of Southern California for a prolonged period. Let's get into some of the details and look at the current conditions across our region. We'll look at the past water year in the summer 2022. It has been quite extreme. Unusual extended summer monsoon pattern. Well, we're going to see that uh, here in October. Pacific storm system is going to park off the coast of California. And so multiple days with threat of showers and thunderstorms passing through our region. Precipitation could be heavy um, and it looks like it will be widespread for sure. That means all areas potentially impacted. Let's take a quick look at summer 2022. It was a wet summer, July through September. September's on the right-hand side. Uh, you could see it was two, three, four times as wet as normal in parts of California. Some of that was tropical cyclone K in SoCal. When you look across the entire West, you can see a lot of blue shading as well. It's a very healthy, active monsoon in the Colorado Basin. Uh, enough for Lake Mead to just bump up a little bit after uh, consecutive months of continuing to drop below record levels. If we ask the question, was it the wettest? Well, for the most part, no. September, not, uh, but California does stand out how wet it was in September. And then uh, June through September period, you have to go all the way out to New Mexico to see that potentially conditions in that area uh, exceeded record levels for June through September. In our region, um, this is the San Bernardino Mountains, we had some really intense rainfall associated with tropical cyclone K. Multiple debris flows affected Forest Falls and Oak Glen. One of them is shown here. In fact, uh, massive areas of mud, debris, logs, rocks moved down the Apple Fire through San Gregonio River in the Banning Canyon. Uh, this photo here taken at Morongo. We could even see the uh, mud flow and debris flow when it occurred in real time on San Bernardino Public Works camera system. And you can see it went up above the restaurant that was severely damaged in Oak Glen. We also had homes damaged up in Forest Falls off Yucaipa Ridge. There were several homes and vehicles severely damaged, uh, in particular the event on September 12th. The summer was also hot. Um, September was hot. So on the left-hand side, I put September. On the right-hand side, I put June through September. So really remarkable temperatures. The dark red shade means uh, warmest on record. That's the bottom line. You can see some parts of Southern California fell into that category in September and for the period June through September. But all the West was much above average. If we look at Southern California May through August, we can see there has been a trend over the past decade or so uh, on the left-hand side here compared to the 30-year average. If we look at the particular September heat wave itself, um, quite remarkable. So if we look at the heat wave ending September 6th of 2022, for the state of California, it came out number one, exceeding even 2006 and 2020 individual heat waves. If you look at September at specific locations, such as San Diego and Ramona, where we have a long history of climate data at San Diego on the left-hand side, it was not the warmest on record, um, but it made it top five. Ramona was the warmest on record. Other locations, such as Riverside, Escondido, were one or two, and Santa Ana and Orange County came in number three for the calendar month of September ranking of average temperature, high and low. If we look at that 10-day heat wave we had in early September, it was ranked one across most of the West and the Great Basin. In fact, the deep shaded red areas on the right-hand side were nine to 13 degrees above average. That includes your low and high temperature averaged over a um, 12 to 14 day period. We're still in a drought um, and the drought is extreme and exceptional in Central Valley of California. 
prolonged drought, accumulation of several years of deficits. We have made some improvement in the green shaded on the right-hand side, especially in the northern Rockies. Parts of the Great Basin and lower Rockies and the Pacific Northwest, thanks to the monsoon largely. The fuel moistures remain um, above average right now, thanks to the recent muggy weather, monsoonal-like weather, and showers and thunderstorms. So we're in pretty good shape right now. Uh, that does not mean that will carry into the fall, however, especially when Santa Ana winds develop. The outlook, in fact, uh, does call for, if there are fires above average in their size and potential for Southern California as we go into November. So despite the rain um, that we have received this summer and fall and more rain expected this week, um, still we're in a state of drought. You can look at the water year, and this is why um, the water year 21-22 is um, most areas 50% or, uh, or less compared to where it should be, so bucket half full. We are entering year number four for Northern California, and this would be year three, entering year three for Southern California. Um, this past water year was not the driest on record, um, even though we did set individual records, such as January through March was the driest on record for Northern California of 2022. The weather pattern this summer, uh, wow, it's been persistent. Uh, upper level high pressure has created those really warm, warmer than usual temperatures and the mega heat wave we saw in early September. It also has been supplying the tropical moisture uh, and allowed a path for tropical cyclone K in early September. This weather pattern is pretty much repeating itself this week and you'll see what I mean. Uh, upper level low pressure is averaged to be along the Eastern Pacific, keeping cooler wet conditions for the Pacific Northwest. This is not one storm, this is uh, June through October 1, averaged together. As a result, uh, the Northern Pacific remains warm, much warmer than it should be, same with the Northern Atlantic. You can see um, that the water along the Equatorial Pacific Ocean is cooler than average. Uh, so now we are entering in year three for the cooler than average phase of La Nina. Meanwhile, Central, Northern, Eastern Pacific, even the beaches of California, uh, temperatures of the ocean running much above average due to the stagnant weather pattern of the past few years. Uh, reminder of La Nina, what does it uh, do? It increases the easterly winds, uh, creates a lot more upwelling, or basically it replaces warm water with cooler water. So it relieves a lot of the excessive heat along the equator and tropics. Um, and it does mess with our weather pattern as well. Typically drier and warmer in the southwest. Not every winter, however, has seen that um, in the past decade or so. We've actually had some really wet winters in La Nina and individual storms as well. If we look at the track of La Nina, uh, yes, this is entering third year. Um, we tend to look at the late fall, early winter. Now, comparing it to other years, um, there are a few. So as we track through this uh, third year of La Nina, you can see that we're um, staying colder than even those other years. So we don't have a lot of comparison uh, when we start talking about three years of in a row of, let's say, a... Um, weak to moderate type La Nina. There was a similar one in the late 90s and early 2000s as shown here, and then a couple other ones. The seasonal outlook has not changed um, because of this, expecting the main jet stream to stay to our north and east. Uh, wetter than average, continuing for the northern Rockies, uh, cooler than average there too. So warmer and drier than average overall. That does not mean we won't see some heavy rain like December 2021, but it does mean um, potential for continued drought conditions. Where is the storm coming from this week? Let's shift gears to upcoming weather. Um, there's an upper level low pressure system. You wouldn't know unless you looked on a weather map, not producing really any weather other than deepening the marine layer, but it's dropping down to Southern California. It's going to park along the coast here. It's also going to tap into that green. That green is moisture, water vapor. That's the monsoonal flow that just won't go away. Uh, came up here with Tropical Cyclone K and really hasn't left since. We've seen patterns like this before. 
You can check your calendar and records. Uh, late October 2016, early October 2018, some of that was tropical moisture uh, from, from remnants. And then also just last year, early October 2021, What's the weather pattern going to do? Well, on Monday it's forming, so today it's forming, uh, and then it's going to settle and, and basically stop and keep turning moisture up from the south-southwest, as shown on the right on Tuesday. So Tuesday could be pretty active, uh, widespread showers and thunderstorms as a result of that low-pressure area interacting with moisture. It doesn't go away. Um, as you go into midweek, Wednesday, Thursday, it looks like it's going to stall, break away from the main jet stream. The main jet stream is way up in... Um, Canada, British Columbia. So the low pressure will really have nowhere to go. Um, meanwhile, dry, warm, upper level high pressure forms in the Pacific North. Take a look at Thursday. We still see the same weather pattern. Um, we see a weather system going by the plains, trying to push it. Probably it's just going to hold it in place uh, with a little bit of offshore flow. So the pattern could repeat late this week. The threat for showers and thunderstorms um, all the way through Tuesday night expands. So it goes from the mountains and some of the valleys, like we've seen over the weekend, to more widespread valleys and mountains. It then shifts uh, on Wednesday, Wednesday night, up into San Bernardino Mountains and L.A. Basin area. Uh, and we could get a break in the south here with a little drier air moving in. But the low pressure area is not going. General rainfall looks pretty widespread and, and locally heavy. Mountains have the best chance of repeated showers and thunderstorms, of course. Um, but it's not just going to be the mountains. It's going to be coast and valleys as well with the threat of some local heavy rain and lightning. And that is why the excessive rain outlook looks like this. Any location uh, from the L.A. Basin all the way down to San Diego points to Palm Springs and in between do have a marginal threat uh, for too much rain. It won't be widespread. Everyone should see rain, and a lot of people are going to see lightning. But um, in terms of the excess of too much rain and potential for flooding, it's going to be within this green area. Uh, in fact, late this week, I said it doesn't go away, um, and we get another surge of moisture with the same low pressure area stalled out on our coast. So the threat for all areas returns Friday into Saturday of this week for more showers and uh, thunderstorm. Check uh, weather.gov San Diego latest updates. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook. Uh, this is posted on a YouTube channel and um, you can reach out to us um, at our phone number listed here as well. Stay safe everyone and keep in mind with this type of weather pattern all areas are at risk for showers and thunderstorms and localized areas are at risk for excessive rainfall or flooding.